morning, good morning, good morning. What a beautiful day it is. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you once again to the Mount Orange Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Review. We're located at 2510 West 10th Street, and let's say Second Drive in Pine City, Texas, Kelly, Texas. For Bishop Johnny Riley is the pastor, I am Minister Morris Richie Jr. We pray that everyone had a uh, Merry Christmas, and we're looking forward to a prosperous New Year. We're sure that our winter quarter of 2021, Unit 1, God requires, He requires justice <coughs> because He has no respect of person. Uh, lesson number 4, December the 26th, 2021. Our devotional uh, background scripture is Nahum 1. Our printed passage this week is Nahum 1, 1 through 3, 6 through 8. 12 13 and verse 15. Our key verse today God is a jealous and the Lord will vengeance. The Lord will vengeance and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance over his adversaries and he reserved wrath for his enemies. God is a jealous God. The Lord will vengeance. The Lord will vengeance and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance over his adversaries and he reserved wrath. For his enemies, they whom one and two. Our subject this week is the consequences of justice. The consequences of justice. I like the consequences, you know, there used to be a show called Truth and Consequences. And it was only one truth, but there's always consequences for that we do. The consequences of justice. Let's pray. Our Father, our God, is once again we come before thee and say thank you. We thank you for another day's journey. We thank you. For we have always transpired this past year. We thank you for being who you are, being God all by yourself. And we pray that you will be with us as we get ready to open up this lesson. Open the minds and the hearts of the people receive. And open my mind to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. The conscious of justice. Some of us wonder sometimes if people, do certain people have a conscience. But we all got one. We might not listen to it, but we all got a country. This is the conscience of justice. It says people are often discouraged by the injustice they see. And we wonder how can people hold on to a hope that justice will prevail. Justice will prevail if you trust in God. Justice will prevail if you lean not to your own understanding. Okay. Justice will prevail. We've been African Americans were, were raised by parents and family members who believed in discipline. The offender with verbal and physical equipments. And most of the time we had to go get our own belt or switch, whichever one instrument that our family preferred to hook you with. But I thank God that they, I was just didn't like it. But this will always keep you on the line of correction. The Bible says, your bastard child, you can't be just me. Chastity, him, him, he wants. So we all have been sometimes distant. But then that was against the standards of right or wrong. Today, you're not allowed to put your children, but thank God for Christian parents who still believe in this. Also, here we find in this lesson, in context, that about a century after Jonah's mercy mission to the Syrians, Nahum was called to predict their destruction as punishment for lasting, for a last in, for a, a rebellion against God, the oppression of Judah. The Syrian was a height. Nahum's prophecy came during the Syrian's height of his political military power. Judah escaped destruction in an early attempt to conquer the city of Jerusalem. For almost a century, Judah had endured the cruelty and the oppression of the Assyrians. Also, they had covered the the Syrians had conquered the northern kingdom, reduced their power of Egypt, and all but alienated many other nations. They harassed Judah. The Syrians harassed Judah and forced her to pay tribute when even they didn't want to. What a relief it must have been to hear that the Syrians reign of terror was about to come to the end. I'm reminded when you talk about the Syrians how Egypt and Pharaoh treated God's people in the land when they were in, in bondage with them. And the 
Syrians were just the same. They were cruel, mean people to the to their oppressors. But as we look, it says the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkosite. God is a jealous and the Lord revenge. The Lord revenge and his spirits. The Lord take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserved the wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and was not at all quick the wicked. The poem of Nahum's prophets is an oracle of pronunciation of revelation, directed towards the nations, a nation other than Israel. Here we find that the source of God's wrath is Nineveh, the capital of the series. We know Nineveh was a city that God told Jonah to go preach to. When he preached to him, and this is about a century later, where God orchestrated an exclusive relationship with the nation of Israel and alienated any third party affiliations. But here we find that God he is tired and sick of his people going against him. His patience is delayed punishment or opportunity for repentance. That's why God gives us a chance to the consequence of justice. He gives us a chance to repent or he's going to send destruction. But there's always a warning before destruction. Here we find the city of Nineveh. The Syrians had taken over and they were oppressing God's people. And we know that God does not allow that. He had done it for them through the prophet Jonah. Ultimately, he would punish sin because of his standards of holiness. One thing about it, there's consequences and repercussions in everything we do. In it. The consequence of justice it has to be punished by the repentance of your sins. The guarantee is that those who trust and obey him will escape the consequence of his justice. Challenge is to build and maintain an obedient relationship with him so that he can use to us use us to proclaim this message to all who will listen. We're just like Nahum. Nahum says it was a burden to him. Meaning it was a burden because he had to tell the message of God. He was a prophet of God so he had to listen to God. And his prophecy means a foretelling of future event that's going to come he had to tell it whether it was going to cause him death or life. And that was a burden to him, but he said, because of who he was, because he said God is a jealous God. And the Bible says that we should have no other God before him. But he, the Lord revenged, the Lord revenged, and his spirit, the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. If he loves you, he's going to chastise you. If you're his child, he's going to chastise you. So if we're not doing what he tells us to do, we're not obeying his law. His principle, we will get punished because there's consequences of justice. You think about it, some of us have been in court, man made court, and there's a judge up there. He's judging, he's it's consequences of what you have done. And so we have to let, we have to make sure that, but there's wrath coming on the enemies of God. Because if you're not for it, you're against it. And he's slow to anger. One thing about God, he's long suffering. He's going to give you time to repent, time to come back to make it right. But he's long suffering but, and a great power, but he's not going to quit at all. If you're doing wicked things, you will pay the consequences of justice. And justice has to be served because grace and mercy demand that we all should have it. Thank God for his son Jesus and his mercy. As we move on, it says the Lord has this way in the whirlwind and in the storms. In the clouds are the dust of his feet. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in his fierceness of his anger? His spirit is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good. I love this verse. The Lord is a good stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows them and trust in him. But with that overrunning flood, he will make it utter end of the places there are and darkness shall pursue his enemies. It says the portrayals. The portrayals. That's where we are, the portrayals. The Lord had his way. He made us and he knows all about us. All I said. In the beginning, God created the other. He made us and know all about us. So the Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storms. He he allows storms and whirlwinds to destroy certain places. And then he leaves right across the street. Just like that now. But sometimes he sends a message through the whirlwind to us to get out of attention. Through the storms. And uh, they are just on his feet. It's like, well, it happened. I have to do God says, 
himself. Have to do what I have to do. Then who can stand before his indignation? We wonder sometimes where was God when things happen, but God was there all the time. And we stand against his indignation. Who can stand? They tell him there's a soul that you stand. No place to run, no place to hide. Who gonna be able to stand is dead with strength. Because his anger, his fear is poured out like fire. It's so strong, it's so powerful, it's like fire, the rocks are thrown down by him. He's the one that sends the storms in your life. He's the one that allows that things to happen in your life. But you have to be ready because if you do what he says, because you can't stand the wrath of God. He says to fall in the hands of an angry God. I don't want to fall there. And the Lord, when you're going through these trials and tribulations, when you're going through these storms in life, remember Nahum, the prophet said, the Lord is a good, strong Lord in the day of trouble. And he knew it, they'll be trusted. He's a good stronghold. You can hold on to God's unchanging hand. When you say so, Lord, hold my hand while I run this race. He'll hold your hand. He'll lead you and guide you. But you got to hold on to Him because He won't let go of you. you got to hold on to Him. And He knows who he, who he can trust. He knows who trusts in Him. So I ask the question today, where is your trust? Then He says, but with the overflowing, overrunning flood, but make an utter end of the place of God and darkness shall pursue don't worry about it with things coming in your life. If you trust in God, He's a good stronghold. But then He says, He's like a flood. He will make it utter again in the place of the earth, and darkness shall pursue His enemies. Anybody that's not for God, He says, if He's not for me, you against me. But God will pursue them with darkness in their life. So don't worry about it. He's the one that's going to visit. This one said that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. He's the one that's going to visit. He's the one that's going to take care of it. Of all the problems in your life. But you've got to learn to trust Him because He's the one who directs the storm for the good. But you're like dust. I mean, the consequences of dust. The consequences. There's repercussions and consequences in everything we do because everybody acts. It's normally reaction to something that's already happened. Then it says, Thus said the Lord, They be quiet and likewise. Many. Yet thus shall they be cut down. We shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. For now will I break his yoke from off thee, and will burst thy buds in the sun. Behold, upon the mountains, the feet of him that bring good tidings, that publish peace, O Jew, keep thy soul in peace. Perform thy vows, that the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. The Lord said, I might be quiet right now. Said, yes, those shall be cut down. Don't worry about your enemies. He said, darkness is going to pursue them. He said, things going to happen. I might not say nothing, but you remember you got quiet for 400 years between the Old and New Testament. But he said, don't worry about your enemies. I will pursue them. Though I afflict thee, you might want to do something, but he said, they will be cut off, and they will be. I love the scripture, Isaiah 40, verse 8, it says, The grass withered, the flower faded, the word of God shall stand for That means this too shall pass. He said, telling you right here, this too shall pass. They, I, you might be going through, but they will be no more. At least we're still here. And for now I will break his yoke from off me, and I will burn the buzz and suffer. That yoke was a yoke of abundance of sin that we all have been in most time. But because of grace and mercy, because of consequences of justice, we've broken the yoke of sin. And God said He would break it off from there and He would burst the buzz in Sunday. He said, in other words, He's going to burn it up into the, they'd be thrown into the lake. You know, to rise over a lake in the fire. And He said, look, look, look. He said, look up on the mountains. The peace of them that bring good times. Here who they whom He had to bring destruction, but He brought good times. They published peace. And most of us as preachers and teachers and leaders were trying to bring peace in the dark world. So, the consequence of judgment. And he said, Oh, Judah, he said to us today, keep that peace. Before, do what you're supposed to do. For the wicked shall pass by thee no more. He says, Through thee, he is the only God. He said, Don't worry about it. You do what you're supposed to do. You Listen to my oracles. Do what I ask you to do. And don't worry about them. And they will be cut off. The wicked came, came in. 
Because Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So the wicked will be cut off. And you ain't got to worry about it no more. Just trust in God. Best thing I can say to you, trust in God. And remember that He's a good stronghold in the day of trouble. And He knoweth them to trust Him. Just don't, don't let it become a nether in your life where God has to destroy you. Become the person that God wants you to be. And we pray that the consequences of justice will fall, the, the balance scales of justice will fall right in your life. May God bless you. May God keep you.